is the nation's capital, and this is where decisions are made and uh, ideas are developed and put into practice. So we're bringing people from communities all over America. But the point is convening them in a national summit to really set priorities for the nation around walking. Good morning. It is so good to see you. Really good to see you. Welcome to this plenary day uh, of the Everybody Walk Summit and to uh, making some history together here. So the way this was designed is that day one would be a group of five round tables that would dig deep with core constituencies that we need to learn more about why they value walking and walkability. This summit would be a great opportunity to, to showcase the findings of just where do we stand with public opinion. My favorite finding, we asked, do you think walking is cool? And found 72% say that walking is cool. What this summit has done, it's provided a platform to bring together local action from across the country to energize, to inspire. I never went to college and thought I was going to become a walking advocate, um, but I'm really passionate about walking mostly because walking has personally healed me. The Walking Classroom is a nonprofit organization. The teacher takes the whole class out for a walk. They all listen to the same lesson at the same time, and they come back and they talk about it. They all get some fresh air and some exercise. So that's, that's it. So kids walk, listen, and learn. <laughs> I am honored to be the co-host for today's walking summit. 350 people. It's an awesome experience. It's inspiring. It can be at times very overwhelming. It's one of those things where who knew that there was this many people out there who were excited about walking. Say, I can't hear you out there. I want you to say, neighbor. neighbor. We've got work to do. Today is going to be fun, it's going to be exciting, it's going to be inspiring. I'm happy to be your co-host for today, but at the end of the day, I want us to leave here and remember that we have work to do. Day two, we brought everybody together into one room, and the whole premise of day two was, what are the different perspectives and reasons why different groups care about walking? I think it's very exciting that parks have become part of this conversation. There's been a huge trend over the last, I would say, five years that parks are becoming part of the public health system where they should be and that they are part of the solution. Mayors and elected leaders like walking and walkability because pedestrian is an indicator species of a vibrant downtown. Schools and the National PTA like walking uh, because it's great for brain development. And while we may have different missions and different purposes, we share one common strategy, which is to get more people walking and create more walkable places. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to see so many of you committed to walking and to making um, our communities walkable. And the case for focusing more of the nation's attention and resources on prevention is more than a theory. It's a reality that's grounded in science and experience. I hope you will continue to make a difference and take a minute to walk. Thank you. Washington, D.C. Mayor Vincent Gray did a fabulous talk. We think the District of Columbia is a recognized leader in walkability and pedestrian-friendly development. But this is a city on the move. I ask you to enjoy your time here in the city. We also ask you, if you don't live here, to think about moving to the District of Columbia. <laughs> we had a fabulous keynote by Jonah Berger talking about social contagion. How can we build a social movement around walking? How can we make walking contagious? There's a science behind why people talk and share. There's a science behind why things catch on. And if we can use these insights to craft contagious content, we can get more people walking and we can create a social movement around it. And I think we need to do a better job of marketing walking from the, those of us who know the research, take care of patients. But we got to market all this stuff better because we're going up against pharmaceutical companies that have huge budgets and are experts at marketing. They've done a great job marketing themselves. Unfortunately, we don't have a big pharma for exercise. If there were a drug called walking, I would submit you'd have a hard time finding one that is more powerful. We had a, a great presentation by uh, a couple men. Justin is in a wheelchair, and uh, Patrick's going to push him along the Camino de Santiago uh, in Spain. We deeply desire to show the world that there's so much more possible than the day-to-day. -day. You just have to take the very first step, and sometimes, in this case, let someone else take it for you. Is everyone welcome to walk is what you have to ask yourself. We believe that we are taking care of everybody. And if we're not careful, this movement will be as guilty as others. We will leave those behind because we thought that we took care of everybody, but everyone was not welcome to walk. At the end of the day, we can say this, that everybody walk. This movement 
was conscious and very much committed to ensuring that everyone was welcome to the table. Thank you very much. A3 has two elements to it. One, uh, back at the Center for Total Health, is to make meaning of all of this and craft a go-forward strategy. I recently returned to Los Angeles. If you had asked me, you know, 10 years ago when I had left, that you would see people walking and biking and skateboarding down the street, you would have said, are you crazy? And now you see a lot of that. What I would love to see continue is that students at a young age realize how impactful exercise and even just moderate exercise can be. I'm hoping that the participants at this summit are able to come back together and share success stories. We have to make walking simple, but we also have to make it sexy, where people want to go out and do it. It can't be boring and like ho-hum. I'd like to have a vision of everybody uh, living in walkable communities that makes it possible to safely walk to school, to safely walk to work, uh, to safely walk to shopping and others, so that that would become the norm not something that only happens in certain cities or well-to-do areas. As a nation, by 2040, uh, there's no majority that if we're not making sure we're paying attention to all Americans, nobody's gonna be doing well.